praise God. I want to I want to welcome everybody in the name of the Lord for being yes, here. I am yeah. really glad to see everyone here today. Uh, today we're going to be uh, speaking on the gifts of the Spirit. Now, as you all know, uh, Brenda began started this um, series last Sunday, but uh, as you know, she's going to be speaking more on the prophecy. Uh, so, uh, if anyone has any questions of prophecy or have wondered about that, or if everyone needs to be here next Sunday morning at 9:45 here at the People of the Cross Church, and and listen uh, to that uh, teaching that's going to be here. Okay, so I want to invite everyone here. And so, what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the first 11 verses of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, so we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the first 11 verses. Now, you guys can follow along with your Bible, or also I'm going to have the Bibles right up here, the verses right up here on the board. Too. Okay, so we're going to look at, at these, uh, we're going to look at them one at a time, and we're going to try to really figure out what God is telling us in each and every one of these verses. Okay? So the first verse that comes up, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, when I came to this verse, and I read this verse, the first thing that came to me is that Paul here uh, when he says, I, I do not want you ignorant, you know, uh, there's some people in this church, the church at uh, Corinthians, that uh, they must be having some problems or not really understanding these gifts. And so I did some research, and so I looked uh, at that church. And so uh, some of the things that I found this is a, a new church. First of all, it is uh, that Paul started, he helped train the leaders that went into this church to start this church, and it was in an area where there's all just Gentiles there. And so we, we have to kind of understand that, okay? So all the, the congregation from this uh, church is coming from the Gentiles. Did, did you have something to add? It, it was an area that had not been preached of yeah. cri Christianity. Yeah, it Paul was going into an area that Christ had set him up specifically for for him to go into areas that had not ever had the truth. Yes. So that's what he was walking into. A, a place that has never heard. So they had no knowledge of, so they were ignorant. That was a fact. But also ignorance in the Bible, which you're probably going to get to. But ignorance is no excuse according to God. Yes. And, and ignorance is no excuse because God has given us His Word. Amen. Ignorance is not an excuse because if there's anything we don't know, God has furnished it. That's anything right. that we, let me correct myself, anything that we need to know, God has given us this information right here. Yeah. Now, yes, there's things that we're not going to know, and, and yes, there's things <laughs> that we're probably never going to know here on earth. Right. You know, God is beyond our understanding. But anything that we need to know is right here. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Okay. Amen. So, the first... Uh, the verse here, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts. So, uh, uh, Paul now is going to talk to the church in Corinthians about spiritual gifts. And who is he talking to? It says, brethren. So we know that he is only talking to Christian people at that time. So that is these, these uh, Gentiles who have already converted over to Christianity. So that's a good thing, right? So he's only talking to the Christians that are in this church. But he said, I would not have you ignorant. 
So that tells me right there that they're having some kind of problems. That, that, that there's uh, some people are still not knowledgeable enough about the gifts for them to be operating in those gifts. Okay, so we all understand that. Okay, so let's let's take a look at verse two. Well, Clark, can I say this? Yes. That would go for for the church now too, right? Right. Everybody is not confident in the gifts, or they don't have the knowledge of the gifts. Okay, that goes for us too. Yes. The church now. That's a, another point that I wanted to make, is that when we're studying the Bible, we can look at it from two different directions. First of all, we can look at it that, that Paul wrote this letters, right? Okay, so we can look at it at that angle, and we can try to see and figure out what Paul is trying to teach that church. And so that lesson can apply to us. The second way we look at the eye at that uh, study of verses two is that we know this is the inspired word of God, and so we know that the Bible, each one of these verses, is alive today. Yes, it wasn't yes. only for the people that it was written for at that particular time. Yes. This has a great message for us too today. Yes. And so that's kind of two ways of studying the Bible. As a matter of fact, when we study the Bible, we should look at them from both angles. That's why and, you were having that, this Bible study. That gives us a great uh, insight, gives us more insight on what God is trying to tell us today. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I think, can I put sure. in that okay. um, I think that many, many are called to do, have the gifts. Of, of whatever but for some reason we don't understand that gift and um, we don't des maybe desire that gift enough either you have to desire it. you have to covenant you have to really want it you can't just say yeah I want it but whatever you know you have to desire and I think in order to get along in this world because we're not up we have to be in this world that we really need to understand what Paul is really trying to tell the church. It was actually said for the new Christian for them to learn, but it's sad to say the old church today still don't understand yes. what the new Christian is wanting to learn. Right. Amen. Right. Because they haven't taken the time, right. they don't care enough to study God's Word, uh -huh. to understand it, to uh, eat of it, right. to sit down to God's table and enjoy what He's given us. Exactly. Or we would already be manifesting yes. our gifts that we've been sitting here for 30, 40, 50 years that we're not using. Not using yeah. Not using But the church is still having to be taught, even though we have, we have uh, one new Christian, I'll say, here, and we have one that's now six years, seven years, or whatever. Uh, but we have some that's 30 years. And not just the ones here, others that aren't here. But in many churches, they have not studied this enough to be able to accept their own gift that God has given them that they can manifest within it themselves. Exactly. You can have one or you can have all. Yeah. Yes. And it's still up to the Holy Spirit, but God wants us to be in tune with Him. So I think so many times, I know I get to do my part Sunday morning, but I'm going to say it tonight. So many times we think we are not, we don't, we read right over this. How many of you just read right over it? I read it. The nine gifts, word of wisdom, blah, 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 blah. You read over it. You don't go and study with it, right? We don't study it. What's it mean? Paul, give it, give it here for a reason. Just think what it would be if the church would manifest 
everything that God wants us to, to do. Just think what would happen. Amen. Wonderful. I don't believe the church church teaches enough on it, I and that's not true. And that includes this church. I, that's true. I think so. But yes, Sister Scott has taught and taught and taught uh -huh. on both sides of this spectrum right. yes. over the last several years, four or five different times. But still, we don't grasp it. With paperwork, with questions, with you name it, and we still, like you said, we don't grasp it. And it's yeah. up to us whatever we want. I'll be quite happy. I'll try it too. I will too. Okay. Uh, I was going to kind of bring this up a little bit later, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up now before we really get started. Uh, and I want you to understand that I don't necessarily have any scriptures that's going to back up exactly what I'm going to say, but I'm just going to say it because of my experience of what I've learned from going to several, I've been to several different churches. Okay. So, uh, first of all, Paul here only lists nine uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, gifts. But I'm here to tell you there's many, many more. Just because Paul only listed nine here doesn't mean that that's all of the gifts. There are many, many gifts. Okay? So we want to make that very plain. Oh, there's scriptures for all of that. Yes. Right. And there's other scriptures. As a matter of fact, I did some searching. And uh, in the scriptures, I believe it names at least nine. I found 19 gifts. Okay? And I personally believe there's a whole lot more than just those 19. Because the Holy Spirit can give out whatever gifts He decides to give out to whomever he uh, desires. Okay? So, uh, now I'm going to say this. I believe there's also different levels of the same gifts. Now, what I mean by that is sometimes us being a Christian, all of a sudden we will find ourselves in a position maybe someone comes to us <coughs> And um, and uh, they're having a real bad day, or they they tell us you know it's a terrible situation they're in, or whatever you know whatever that situation is. Well, well, the Holy Spirit at that time could use through you one of those gifts to help lift that person up. You know whether it's a a, a, a word of wisdom or a, a word of knowledge or whether it's it's a it's a, a word of give you a little extra faith so that you can build their faith up whatever it is, I believe the Holy Spirit from time to time uses people that way, and so when He uses it that way, you may not have that gift all the time, right. and we may not operate in that gift all the time, but. The, the Holy Spirit, when He sees a, an opportunity where you need it, I believe He can give it to you yes. at that particular time. Okay, so that's like one level uh, of that gift. And I believe there's another level of that gift when, when the Holy Spirit gives you that gift and then people uh, might use it every once in a while. There are people in the church uh, and I believe a beautiful smile can be one of those gifts. I believe uh, there are some people in the church today that sit in the church that when uh, someone comes in, whether it's a new person or a person that's been there for a long time, that person goes and greets that person. And the way they greet them, the love they show those people when they come in, the smile and everything that they have, just automatically lifts that person up. There are people coming in who maybe uh, they argued with their spouse or they got up late or, or on the wrong side of the bed, so to speak. And and so they're coming into church kind of dragging and, and, and such. And then when that person greets them and, and says, how are you today? And shows them the love of Jesus Christ, they're just automatically lifted up. Well, I believe that that is one of the gifts that the Holy Spirit can give someone. And that person operates in that gift from time to time. And I believe that is their ministry. But is that, that's kind of like their, 
what I personally call uh, the first level of their personal ministry. Okay, so you can have that gift and you work it every once in a while as God, as the Holy Spirit sees fit. Yeah. Now, I believe there's a higher level. Now, the Holy Spirit says you are called to be, to use this gift that I'm giving you. Now you start operating in that gift a lot more often. You, you operate in that gift every time a situation comes up that, that where you or somebody else needs that gift. Now you've been called to that gift. So I believe, now this is just me personally, and just seeing how things work in church. So now you've been called. And I believe when you've been called to a certain ministry, then, then your pastor is going to recognize that. Yes. Yes. He's going to see that, and he's going to see that you're operating in that gift. And so now, later on, we're going to see where it comes when we talk about the difference of administrations. And, and I should have waited till later, but I... So the difference of administrations, now we're talking about offices. Or to put it really plainly, we're talking about an officer because we're really talking about the people that are in that office. So then when our pastor recognizes we have someone who is operating in that gift all the time like the Holy Spirit wants you to, now the a pastor of a church then can actually uh, name an office. Now he, he puts you in a position and, and if it's prophecy or if it's healing or whatever, now the pastor says, now you're in the office of healing or you're in the office of prophecy. You've been called to that office. So I, I believe uh, myself, there's, there's like at least three different levels when it comes to um, gifts of the Spirit. And I think it all has to do with how close that person is to God. Amen? Yes. You know, Brother Harvey, uh, one thing to me being hurt, I have seen wonderful gifts in my Christian friends, how they have ministered to me when I didn't feel like even picking up the Bible, and I should have, that I didn't feel like reading, I didn't feel like praying. Well, they ministered to me, and that, I believe, is a wonderful gift that God yes. gives them. That's why we're saying there's so many gifts. Uh -huh. And they, yes. they they minister to you, and when they get through, you just feel like that you've just been so blessed because yes. you didn't feel yes. like doing it yourself. That's true. Yes, because uh, the Holy Spirit gives those gifts out because... Um, because he wants a result yes. to come out of that. Yes. Amen. And everyone who follows the, the guiding of the Holy Spirit and uses a gift, and he's using that gift to a person or a group of people, then there's going to be at least one person, if not the whole group, is going to be lifted up yes. in some way. Amen. Amen. Okay? Yes. So we have to understand that. Amen? Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's, don't let me do that. This is Sister Ann said. No, I just oh, said we yes. need to be encouraged. You know, somebody can encourage us. We yes. need encouragement. We all do, sometimes more than others. Yes, I do. Yes. And there are times like when the Lord will open our mouths and He'll fill it. You know what I mean? Yes. If we're close to the Lord instead of just saying a lot of times get ourselves in trouble just speaking the way we want to speak yes <laughs> but if we'll just you know let the Lord there are certain times that you wait on him and he'll fill your mouth Definitely. what to say yes but you know people are very uh, I don't know where I'm trying to say when you walk you can sense almost where a person is in the spirit sometimes yes. you can because you can know they've been with the Lord there's times I, in my own life, you know, I, I try to pray before I come to church and I feel real, real, you know, yes. and, and other times yes. you don't. And there's a difference. There's a world of difference and whose fault it is 
you don't feel it's our own. Yes. yes. Because Definitely. we have not asked for that special anointing. We have not prayed. We should be prayed out. I mean, I like Sunday morning when yes. we come in, ready to participate. The pastor, not wait till he gets through it to, the, to build us up. We should be there yeah. willing and hearing yes. that message and, and praise the Lord or whatever we do, you know, yeah. to, to be excited. Because that's we have something to be use. excited about. What we need to come uh -huh. in the church with excite, excitement, excitement, and know, not some, come in. Oh, well, I had to get up so know, early. You know something? I'm going to go a little bit further than what you got to say. Uh -huh. Every morning, Every. we need to wake up. Yes. And to get get with the Lord and to get that excitement. Yes. in us before we start our day. Yes. Every day. Because if I we do that every day, by the time we get to church, man, you think what would happen in church if every member in the congregation did that yeah. all week yeah. and when they show up for church, everybody's excited and they can't wait, you know, to can't hear the sermon or they can't, yeah, wait the can't wait to worship. You can't wait to get here. Yeah. You, know, you can't wait to, maybe yeah. I'm going to learn something different, good tonight, you know, or Sunday yeah. or Sorry. Yes. The Bible says we are to come expecting. Yes. <clears throat> That's the word that he uses. We are to come in expecting. We're expecting to receive from the Lord. If you don't come in expecting anything, well, you won't get anything. You won't get anything. Get yes. <laughs> okay, we need to move on. <laughs> okay. Getting to our second verse up here. <laughs> it says, Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, <clears throat> even as ye were led. Now remember I said this was an area, this is an area where there were nothing but Gentiles. And like Pastor explained, uh, uh, they were Gentiles and they didn't really know much about Christ. But, this is a fairly new church. And um, when I looked into this church, at first, this, this church was starting to take off really good. Now, it's a young church. They're preaching Jesus Christ. Paul uh, uh, taught and, and led the, the leadership of this church. This, this church was really starting to take off. And, and so... They were starting to get a lot of conversions uh, to the Christian uh, faith because they were Gentiles. And so he's pointing out that, well, I know that the congregation there was, is all Gentiles. And so he's saying uh, that they were all carried away into these dumb idols. And they were even led to these dumb idols. So these are all people who their parents, the leaders of the community, the, uh, their old priests, everything was teaching them. They would take a stone or wood or whatever and they would carve out something that they would call their idol. They would call that God. Of course, that's with a small g. They would call that God. Now here Paul is calling it a dumb idol. Now it is dumb, meaning that it cannot speak. Yes. It is not a live God. It is a stone or a piece of wood or whatever. Yeah. So when these people were praying to that, what they thought was God, their idol, idols were not giving them any answers. If a person was deep down in the valley, they're in trouble, they're praying for help from these idols, and these idols are not giving them anything. They're not only dumb, but they're deaf because they can't hear yes. what they're praying for. Right? That's right. So Paul is here saying that we know that you were led and you were carried away to all these idols. And so that's all their first teachings. But now that they come to this church, now they're getting to be taught about a live God. Amen. One that does hear you. Yes. One that can see you. 
one that can't answer you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, now the third verse, let's see what we can get out of this. Just before you go there, Brother okay. Randy, just yeah. quickly. You know, the commentary says here, they were primarily being led by superstitious and witchcraft. Yes. The world today is being led by superstitious, witchcraft, yes. doctrine, all kinds of stuff. Anything, you know, you, you see this people around with black fingernails, black lipstick, yeah. black this, black that, black clothes, and but they're teaching death. Is yes. You're yes. teaching you death that's not going to do you any good. It's satanic. Yes. It's satanic. Very satanic. And we got to be careful. That's what we were talking about uh, Sunday. I believe it was Sunday. And, and that who you're getting close to is friends. I had one time some friends that they very satanic. And more I found out about them, the more I found out I didn't want to be near them. And uh, we have to be careful. We have to pray to God, but we don't want to turn them so off that we can't be able to witness to them. Yes. Yes. To my understanding, they're looking for something they can see and feel. Like you said, the rock with the little picture and stuff. If they don't understand the word of the Lord, they don't look for the word. But people are just looking for something they can see and touch. Yes. That's the kind of God they're looking for. And they don't know about the Lord. And they don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, now one, one I, I, I just want to remind everyone uh, that everyone out there who is in all these things, Santan, you know, everything uh, that's opposite to the Christian, we have to remember they have a soul. And yes. we have to remember that God tells us to love them. We are not to like anything they're doing. We have to be a Christian, so we have to tell the truth about it. But we, we have to tell the truth in such a way that they can still see our Christian love for them. Okay? Okay. So we have to be cautious about the way we talk to the world. Amen? Okay, so... Verse number three. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God called Jesus accused. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. First of all, I just want to point out that the Holy Ghost and a Holy Spirit, everybody knows that's the same, right? Amen. Okay. Um, a lot of times in the Bible it talks about the Holy Ghost. But it's, it, it's the same thing. Ghost and Spirit means exactly the same thing. So we don't want to get confused. And as a matter of fact, uh, the reason so many of the churches now say Holy Spirit instead of Holy Ghost is because the last 20, 30, 40 years or whatever or more, Hollywood has put their own meaning to the word ghost. And so if we have new Christians coming up, they're coming out of the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we start talking about the Holy Ghost, now all of a sudden they're getting all these images that Hollywood and that all, all these authors of books, uh, they get a completely different image of what we are trying to say. Okay? So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with saying the Holy Ghost or there's nothing wrong with calling it the Holy Spirit, but when it comes to a new Christian, we might want to be a little bit cautious, okay? Okay, so that's, so that's why uh, when we talk about it, we always say the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the first half of this uh, verse, whereas I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God called Jesus accused. Accursed. Cursed. Accursed. Accursed. Okay. So in other words, if anyone says that Jesus Christ isn't the Messiah, Messiah, if anyone says that Jesus 
didn't die on the cross so that we have a way to forgive our sins. If, if he says in any way Jesus Christ did not rose again after the third day, if in any way someone says that Jesus Christ is not a God and he's not a live God today, then he is not speaking to the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit is not speaking to him and God. telling him things to say. That's That's right. Right. So if God. anybody is, is saying anything like that, if anybody is saying anything negative, then we know that person, the Holy Spirit is not speaking to or through that person. Okay, so that's what Paul is telling us here. Isn't yeah. the New Age people, aren't they kind of that way? Uh-huh. You gotta yeah, be they've careful. got some really weird stuff. Yeah, I know, yeah. you got to be careful. Well, see, we know the difference. Yeah. We know through Jesus died on my cross and rose yeah. again. Amen. Too many people leave that part. They they think the cross is gory, you know? Yeah. They don't like, they just like to think, picture God is all beautiful and Oh, God loves me and everything, but their lifestyles don't show it. Yeah. They do everything the world does, but yet they think they're okay. Some yeah. of them, not yeah. everybody. <laughs> yes, yeah. go ahead. I think we have to be very careful <coughs> what this is saying here, too, about speaking by the Spirit of God. You have to be careful. If you've ever listened to a medium when they're talking, they speak and that a lot of times they will talk about heaven they talk about spirits and they they talk about uh, angels yes. and they they talk about all these different things as a medium and they say that they 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 hear from the dead you know oh your dad's in heaven and this is what he said we have to be very careful. That yes. is not coming from the Holy Spirit. No, it's not. Yes. yes. And that it is be there to begin with. Because we don't speak to the dead. The right. dead definitely doesn't talk to us because the dead, the spirit is left. Yes. So, and the soul has left. It's just a body there. And that's so, one of the nine gifts right. is discerning of the spirits. That's right. So we have but if you really very, sit very. sometimes and listen to a medium, I mean, that's how they convince people that this is real. It's because they, they say it's the spirit talking to them. I have a gift. It's a gift. Well, they got a gift, okay, but it's not it's not God. God. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's, well, that's a gift from Satan. Yes. So... We just, we just, you know, like you said, we have to have discernment. And if we know the word, then we won't be carried away by those things. Right. Yes. That, that's, that's a really good point. Uh, whenever we hear someone and they're saying uh, that they hear from angels or they hear from this or they hear from that or whatever the point, you know, and sometimes they can be very accurate. Yes. Sometimes they can every even their, their prediction right. of the future can come true, but just because their prediction comes true doesn't mean they heard from God. Yeah. Doesn't because mean. The devil is and very smart. that is why she she pointed out that everything they say has to align up with this word. If they're saying anything that doesn't line up. Even if that their prediction comes true, it doesn't mean that they heard from God or from the Holy Spirit. Okay? That is one more point why we have to know this word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Harvey. Yes. Isn't there a story in the New Testament where there is someone that is following Paul yes. or Peter? In yes. Story? Yes. Yes, I, think it's I remember that. Yes. I don't know where yes. that. And, and that medium came up. Yeah. And and uh, I believe you went to Paul or one of the apostles. I, yeah. I can't remember everything, but he was following Saul. Yes. And Saul. she kept saying Saul was the she one that he was. That. And this Saul is... even went to the medium, and and God had already told him, don't, don't go there. Don't go. Don't go there. And he did it anyway. 
and that's when all the bad stuff started happening to Saul. Yes. I, I think there's another, there's a scripture in there yeah. where this uh, person is, is in the medium and, and doing all sorts of things and everything, and uh, either apostle or maybe it was Jesus, I, I can't remember what, really right now, but he, they told him, when they came to him, he says, who are you? I don't know you. That's right. And, and, he said, I know Paul, I know, yeah. you know, and yes. Jesus, that's, and that's I know, but I don't even know, I don't who know who you yet. are. Isn't that what the seven brothers or something like that? Where they got beat up or something? Yeah. Oh, I haven't yeah. read that story in a long time, <laughs> but that's a good story. But, but anyway, uh, they were letting him know that I don't know you. So he, he uh, they was not speaking. The Holy Spirit wasn't speaking to him through him. But the whole, uh, God was not speaking to them. Uh, and these are people who made predictions that came true. Uh, but so, so we have to be really cautious about who we listen to. Amen? Okay. Now the second part of this, he goes on, Paul goes on and said, and that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit but by the Holy Ghost. So, if you're calling Jesus Lord, if you're saying God is God, and we're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you truly mean it, then you cannot say that unless the Holy Spirit is, is guiding you and telling you those things. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, why would Paul tell these people in this church congregation, why would he tell them that? So, he's trying to show them some ways that they can discern and can, can tell from the congregation who is hearing from God and who is not. And so, when we come to church, uh, it, that, that even means he, this church too but really I think it means when you're going to those mega churches you know there's there's maybe a thousand people out there and so if you ever went one of those churches you got to be careful who you listen to and who you uh, make contact and who you're going to uh, try to become uh, Christian friends with so you, you've got to be really careful in your Christian law, walk People go around calling themselves Christian, and you have to be careful of what, what they're saying. Amen? Well, you listen to what they're saying, but you've got to discern if it's of God or not. Yes. And, you know, that's the that's the whole thing right there. And I'm, I'll shut up. Sorry. And the way you discern them? Is what they're saying has to line up. Yeah. Amen? Amen? If it's negativity, or if it doesn't line up, if you find a verse where they're, you're trying to say it's the opposite, or, you know, if it's negative from what God is saying, then be cautious. Yeah. If we're listening to the Spirit, really listen to the Spirit, yes. we're going to know immediately if that's not of God. Yes. Because God can give us, uh, He can give individuals at the time that's needed a, a, a gift of discernment. Right like there. Yes. Some people work in that gift all the time. All the time. Some you, part of the time. Some sometimes. Yes. Are needed. And the closer we get to God, uh, the more, more whatever gifts they give us, the more we're going to work in. Amen. You need to keep your pastors and your leadership in prayer continuously that they recognize it immediately yes. in order to help protect you, the congregation that they've been chosen to, to do so. They should be there, but you know sometimes it takes some extra prayer to see, see it be there. Uh, I've only been in the situation once that I've had to say something to somebody. And, and, and it's not something you, you seek out to do. 
because it can it can be the devil can make a nasty situation out of it. Yes. Yes. But you you have to deal with it, and it needs to be dealt with immediately. Right. Yes. And on like we say, hit that nail on the head. You need to hit it on the head, and you either escort them out or tell them to keep quiet. But in keeping quiet doesn't mean they're not going to be disrupted. That's why I have taken the stand along with our, 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 other, our other leadership is we will not settle for any dissension in a church. No gossiping, no dissension, nobody getting four or five click over here, a seven, eight, ten click over there, a twelve click over there. We don't allow it because that divides a church. Amen. It divides what God intended for it to be. We want it to be a place that you come in and we're doing what we're doing. We're learning about Him. And one you mind, know what? One mind, one accord, That's period. That's it, right there. The devil is good at what he does and so we have to be mindful of what he wants out of our life. What would that be? To bring our church down to bring uh, our people down. And and how does it happen? Through the people. Disruption. Yes. You know, I've seen them come into the church when I was just a little girl. And some ministers, they weren't real learned. In fact, one my dad, you know, he wasn't real learned about it. And he allowed one to come up to speak. And he was of the devil. I mean, and my dad had to take authority and set him down because he was just tearing our church up. But he'd come on just like a little this well, sweet plant. That's what they do. Yeah. Yes. They, you know what they do? They Let get your confidence. You. Yes. Let me they tell you did. what they do. They come on just like that, and they want to get real close to the pastors. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's the way they did Daddy. Yeah. But Daddy caught onto it right quick. Yes. They, want it, they want it Stop they want it. The, they want the pastors or the leadership of the church to think um, you know to be best buddies. Okay. Well I am I'm actually gonna get gonna get into this a, a little bit more a little bit later because Paul has something to say about that too. Oh okay. okay. So let's wait a little bit and we're gonna get back in that absolutely discussion. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's take a look at verse number four. And it says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Now I think everybody, especially after the uh, lesson that Brenda gave us uh, last Sunday, I think everybody really understands the diversities of gifts. That plainly means that there is a lot of different kinds of gifts. I think that's kind of plain language there. So, is, is there any questions? Does everybody understand the phrase diversities of gifts? Okay, good. I think, I think that's really plain. Now, the second part of that verse is something that is very, very important, and I want you to all keep this in your mind as we go through the next few verses. Because Paul here is giving a great lesson to that church in Corinthians. Okay? And the second part of that verse it says, but the same spirit. Yes. Now this is a very significant phrase here. And let's get a few more verses down and we will see. We'll get into that we'll see what Paul is trying to teach that uh, uh, church and what God wants us to learn from it. Okay? Now, I also want to mention, just like Pastor has said this before, and I've said this before in our teaching too, you know, everything in the Bible is noteworthy. We, we, we need to understand it. But when God repeats Himself, then that is something we're to take extra special on, right? right? And I'm going to tell you, 
in these first 11 verses, God repeats himself yes. six times. Yes. Okay? So that tells us that that is going to be very significant, that he is really trying to teach us something from that phrase. So once we get, get into that and, and read that several times, then I'm going to get into that lesson that Paul is trying to tell everybody and that God wants to tell us. Okay? So verse number four, there are different diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Okay? Verse number five. And what happens in verse number five? If you'll see the, the second part of that verse, he says, but the same Lord. Now, we all know we only have one God, right? Amen. There's only one God. Yes. Now, we talk about God the Father, God the Son, the God the Holy Spirit. So when we say God, we're talking about one. When we say Lord, we're talking about one. When we say Spirit, we're talking about one. So here is the second time that Paul that, that God has told him to say the same thing a second time. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're going to read a few more verses, and when we get up here, uh, then we're going to get into that lesson that Paul and God wants everyone to truly understand about that. Okay? Okay, so uh, verse 5, it says, and there are differences of administration. So at differences of administration, what that means, of course, is it means there's different officers, offices of, uh, of those gifts. Now when you're talking about different uh, offices, I think I've already explained. Remember, I, I told you my personal uh, belief, there are some people who are just given every once in a while the gift because of the situation they're in. Sometimes a person is given uh, uh, a gift, uh, and, and personally I call that my personal uh, ministry. And, and I don't hold an office in a church or anything like that, but uh, if, if mine is to greet people, then, then that is my personal ministry, and I have to follow what the, the Holy Spirit tells us, and so I'm greeting people, and they're being lifted up because of that. And then there are some people who are called to a higher calling in that same uh, gift. And then uh, the pastor of that church is going to recognize it, and he's going to see that you're really uh, operating in that gift. And then uh, through him and through you, you're going to let each other know that, that that person is called into that ministry and then he can uh, officially make an office in, in that church to be uh, uh, the prophet of that church or to be the healer of that church or whatever. And when, when, you, when you do that, you're called to a, a higher place, okay? And so that's what it means by administration, okay? And, and it's not so much the name of the office or the office that they're really talking about the person that is in that office, okay? Does, does anybody, does everybody kind of understand when they're talking about the differences of administration or anybody else have any questions about the administration of the gifts? We all yeah. work together. Definitely. For the bond, for the glorification of God. We all work together. One may have one thing and one another. We're not all exactly the same. Yeah. Even a person, for instance, like you, Brother Harvey, okay, you're a father, you're a husband, you're a grandfather, you're a teacher, you're yes. one person. Yes. But uh, you we, do we different work. things. You Versus talk to your grandchildren, different or your great grand whatever, different than you do to the but you're still Brother Harvey. You know, yes. you're Harvey. Yeah. But but there's one of you, but you have different functions. A husband, a grandfather, a great grandfather, a teacher, 
uh, whatever, but you're still the one person. And the Lord, there's different, we all have different gifts. So I, we can't compare ourselves with somebody else. We can look at them and say, oh, I, I like what they have. I would like more of that, you know, it, that, because it encourages us. But, you know, we need to seek the Lord, and He will help us. Yes. Because God wants us all to work together for the good for Him. You know, everybody does different things. Like you said, the person that smiles at somebody as they come into church. And, you know, that encourages that person that comes in. Maybe they're low, and that helps them. So we all have different things that we do. Yeah. But we all work together for good yeah. for God. That is good. I think which, no, not one person is better than the other. No. Right. No. See, that's no. not she, that uh, that is very well said, said and uh, that is part of what Paul is saying when he when he keeps repeating himself. Okay, so we're going to get even even more into that in a little bit. Yes, Pastor. Also, it's no contradiction in themselves. They do not contradict That's the number themselves one thing whatsoever. Right there. No contradiction at all. And the and I just slipped with the other thing I was going to say. Oh, and everyone, someone, uh, I hate it when t someone tells me I don't have a gift. Yeah. Well, then get back on your knees and ask God what it is to remind you because you have a gift. Yes. yes. Everybody. And, and sometimes I don't mind reminding them their gift from the smile, from a kind word, from greeting someone, from somebody that sings a beautiful special to someone that's teaching a class. Everybody, and there's not one of those any more important than the other, except the teaching and preaching of the Word and the same. But that doesn't make that person, as Sister Ann was there, given a, a distinction about, doesn't make any one person better, better than the other. And that's where people get a misunderstanding. Well, yes. I don't have a gift. You've got this, you've got that. And you have this. I, I, I'll use, if I may, Sister Marguerite. I tell you what, when she starts praying, I can start shouting. Amen. Because immediately she touched the throne of God. Immediately she's reaching out. How did that happen? For the last six years that I've known her, it's because she's been in this Word. Because she's been studying it. She's been to nearly every Bible study that's ever been. She's been to every Sunday morning Bible study nearly that's ever been. She's been in prayer groups. She's been... That makes a difference. That makes somebody that I can feel like I can call out to when I need somebody. Amen. Amen? And that makes a prayer warrior. And she doesn't even realize sometimes she's doing it. But many people have that same gift, but they don't exercise it. I know Sister Ann studies and sings all the time. Veronica is studying it all the time and notes. And I know Sister Anna has for years and years. But we all need to start exercising what God's given us. And the more we would exercise that, as we said earlier, if we came in prayed up, ever who said that one, I forget. But ever who said yeah. that? If we came in prayed up, and you, you got on it. What a ministry that would go out from here. Oh, yeah. What a beacon, what a light lighthouse that we would have. Oh, yeah. People would walk out of here shining. Oh, yeah. And no matter where you walk, people would want to know, why are you smiling? I know you work 12 hours, you do this, you do that, or whatever. Or you've been sick, your son's been sick, this, that. You know, we all have our trials, but you still smile. Amen. Well, maybe uh, since we're getting on this point, uh, so I, I just want you to know uh, through all these, these scriptures from, from 1 to, to 11, uh, like I said, Paul, therefore God, repeated himself that it's the same Spirit. Now, we've been talking here lately 
just just now a couple of times. This is the lesson that Paul is trying to teach uh, the people in, in uh, the Church of Corinthians. Okay, now let me give you a little more background and let you know what's happening here in this church. This is a great church. It's, it's a, a fairly young church. It is starting to grow really good, okay? Uh, good things are happening in this church. Uh, uh, in the congregation, they're being raised up. These people are receiving these gifts from the Holy Spirit, right? And so they're starting to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And at first, everything is really good. Because of the gifts, the community is seeing uh, 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 miracles and the signs and wonders, right? Because of that, more and more people are coming to that church. More and more people are being converted from Gentiles into Christians. That's a great thing. This church is starting to grow and grow and it's starting to get a little bit big. And then you have all these people who are operating in these gifts. And now what happens? Now you get some of these people or gifts all of a sudden, they think, start thinking, I'm a little bit better. I've got this gift, and I'm using it, and I'm working in it all the time, so I'm a little bit better. You know, I'm a little bit holier than now, than all the other congregation. So what happens now? Pride starts in and some of the people who has those gifts. And this is what Paul has been hearing about this church. And this is one, one of the biggest reasons why Paul is writing this. And this is why Paul keeps repeating himself that there is only but one spirit. There's different gifts. There's going to be different people who get different gifts. But guess what? There's only one spirit. Yeah. And because there's only one spirit, there has to be unity between the different gifts. And here we got pride and, and other things starting to enter those people who have those different gifts. And now these people who get, uh, they get a little bit conceited about it. I'm holier than now. And now what happens? You've got some people who's, who's operating in the gifts, maybe in the same gift or in different gifts. And, but what happens? They start butting heads. They start saying things that are, are a little bit different from each other. They're, they're not aligning up together. These people are starting to get out of unity. Pride can take over and terrible things can start happening. And, and now you've got people operating in the gifts and these gifts aren't aligning with the teachings of Christ. They're not aligning themselves to each other. If you have two people operating in gifts and they say something that is contradictory, then, then you have to be careful which one you listen to. Maybe one or both, you better stop listening, listening to them. This is the lesson. This is why Paul keeps repeating. There's a lot of different gifts. There's a lot of people operating in different gifts. But guess what? There's only one Holy Spirit. Right. So that one Holy Spirit is not going to contradict himself. Right. So Amen. when he gives words, or he gives whatever kind of gift it is, and these people operate in these gifts, they're not going to contradict each other. That's right. They're going to be in unity of each other. It's the same Spirit. It's giving them the same information. The, the same whatever gift they have. So they're in unity. If, if they're really listening to the Holy Spirit, they're going to be in unity. Yes? We should be happy when somebody... We should be happy when we know that somebody is, is seeking God and, the, and God gives them something. Yes. Instead yes. of letting jealousy come in. Yes. Amen. <laughs> That's what it is. It's jealousy. Yes. Jealousy. They're jealous that they don't have it. Well, they could maybe have it too if they wanted it bad enough. Yes. Yes. <laughs> really? So, so, the, so these people, uh, they're, 
they're, they're causing this church, their congregation, to get out of the community. They're causing their church to get out of alignment with the leadership of that church. They're causing these people, uh, uh, all these people and all these gifts should be in one accord. Yeah. You know, and, and it's kind of like the, the joke our sister gave us, you know, you put 10 people who, who have this gift in one small car, one small Honda, they should fit comfortably in that car. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, if we really understand this, then that is why Paul here, and that is why God is repeating himself. When God repeats himself, we need to really pay attention. And here, God repeated himself. As you will see as we go through these um, verses, he repeats himself about six times. He tells us it's the same spirit. If it's the same spirit, then uh, he cannot contradict himself. He's not going to get out of alignment with God's word or with the leadership. Yes, go ahead. If you have two messages come out, which that's very possible. Yes, you can. If you have two different people give a message, um, and one message could be negative, and one message is positive, this one comforts, exhorts, um, then that's your discernment right there. Yes. Because he says, if it doesn't edify, exhort, and comfort, it's not of the Lord. Yes. And you can have two different messages that, that do the same thing, and it is of the same spirit that's given to two different people. But it better have those three things in it. Yeah. yeah. Or at least one of those things. And if it doesn't exhort, lift up, or comfort the congregation, then we know that it wasn't of God. Yes. Yes. <coughs> so we all understand that sometimes you can get different messages, uh, but that's okay and that can be true. It, as long as, like she said, none of them are, are negative. So there can be different messages from the same tongue or, or whatever, you know. And they won't contradict each other. Right. They will not contradict. They will not say anything that is going to make the congregation lose any kind of unity. It, 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 it's not going to do anything to make any argument or, or uh, uh, you know, it, you're not going to debate the thing between each other saying, well, no, it means where it's this, you know, no, no, it's this. You know, you're going to come together. Right. Yes. You know, uh, Brother Mike can uh, say that what I'm saying is true. <coughs> Years ago, when we were first growing up in the Pentecostal, man, I tell you, they'd give some messages out and tell you, yeah, they'd tell you how you're going to go to hell and, and all of that. And you would, as a child, I felt that was wrong what they were doing. They would give a message in tongues and then they'd interpret it in that sense. And, but God builds up, lifts up. He doesn't tear us down and tell us what bad things like that. But that was because they weren't learned enough in the Spirit, didn't understand how to handle what God had for them. Yes. Am I right, Brother Mike? You're right. They may have had a message also and it wasn't interpreted you know, correctly. I mean, I've seen pastors have to ask people to leave the church or settle down or leave. Yeah. Because they were speaking out and it and they knew that it wasn't of God. Because you know you know if it's of God. You, you know that God always lifts up his people. He's always telling his children that he loves them. He's there for them. Um, it's always a, a positive, I've heard your cries, you know. What he speaks to you is, is, is in love, because he is love. Yes. Yeah. Now, 
on that, of course. Um, but you know, can't there be a warning though sometimes through a message? Can't there be a warning? Yeah, Just yeah, like if you have a child that. that's misbehaving really bad, as a parent you might spank that child. But you spank them because you love them. You don't spank them because you But it's them. done it's still done yeah. in an uplifting way. Right. Oh I yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in an uplifting yeah. way. Uh, uh, the messages from God it's not going to be negative. is always going to be the truth. Yes. That, that's number one. It's always going to be the truth. Yes. Now, if he does have to give a message about hell or, or whatever the subject is, it's going to be, first, it's going to be about the truth. Secondly, he's going to be exhorting. It's going to be encouraging. Exhorting, he's going to give you, you the truth go. about the gospel, of, about the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Right. He's, he's not gonna. He's not gonna go off that. So he's gonna tell you the truth. He's gonna be e exhorting you. It's gonna give you information that is gonna help you. Yeah. He's gonna give you information that is gonna help you to get closer to God. He's not gonna give you some information that's gonna throw you on the floor yeah. and say, "Oh, woe is me! I, I, I've sinned. You know, I, I can't be forgiven. I, I just that, that's too bad." You know, whatever it is, he's going to lift you up in some way, and get, and his purpose is always going to be to get you to get closer to him. A warning would be that he is saying that I am coming soon. Yes. That's yes. What meant. You know. Uh, yes. You're, you're, you could hear hear that from the Lord. I'm coming soon. Yes. Warning. Yeah. I give you a choice, heaven or hell, yeah. but I give you heaven. Yes. Openly, right. it's yours. Yes. For the taking, it's free. And any message like that is always going to cause, always going to help some people to try to reach out to God more. It's, 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 the purpose isn't going to be to throw you on the floor no. and make you feel like, no. you know, I can't reach God because I've sinned too much or whatever. You know, yeah. it's always going to lift you up. If that's the purpose of it. It's always going to try to get you to get closer to God in some way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so now we've kind of got into why Paul kept repeating himself so much. It's the same spirit. We have to be in unity. Okay? So um, that may be a good place for us to stop at, at this time. Uh, we, we've gone up to number five. I just want to make sure everyone understands what the administration uh, of the of the gifts are. Everyone understands that. Yes. Okay. So we can move on. And so next time we're going to pick up on verse six. Okay. Next Wednesday. Right? Next Wednesday. Yes. We're going to be here next Wednesday. Uh, to complete this or to continue with this study and so we want everyone who's interested in this study to come on down to uh, the people of the church cross here in Los Banas at uh, six o'clock and uh, you're all invited to the study amen amen uh, Brenda would you like to close in, in prayer yes Father, we just thank you tonight for the, yes. the teaching that has come to us, the, the clarity that you want us to have, Lord Jesus. And I, I thank you for that. And I thank you for the voices that are coming forth, Father, from you. Lord Jesus, and I ask that you would bless each and every one of our people that's here tonight. Keep them safe as they go home. Um, bless the ones that couldn't make it tonight and keep them safe. And Lord, we're excited to come back Sunday morning. And Father, we thank you for the place that you have given us to come and worship. In the precious name of Jesus, I thank you and I pray. Amen. 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 And also, I want to remind everyone Amen. that uh, Brenda is also teaching this series, but she's going to uh, focus mostly on prophecy. So if anybody out there has any questions or want better understanding about the gift of prophecies, please be here Sunday morning at, at uh, 945 at the People Across Church. You're all invited. Amen? Amen. Amen. I wonder if you guys would...